Thank you for joining NMH at One, where we highlight the news making headlines in the land of the brave and beyond, ranging from current affairs to community stories, sports, and economic news. In the news today, mining companies pay chiefs sitting allowances, Lutombi scoffs at Chinese tender Bruhaha, and Nampower threatens to switch off the lights. I am Ashwin Berry, and this is NMH at One. In the midday news update, the Namibia Correctional Services will in future not recruit persons with visible tattoos on their bodies. The decision comes amid concerns that some correctional officers bear tattoos associated with gangs. Making the order, Namibia Correctional Services Commissioner General Rafael Hamunyela said visible tattoos were not a good reflection of the NCS. The NCS shall not recruit persons with visible tattoos on their bodies, hence the need to amend the recruitment policy and the code of conduct to ensure that in future, no person with visible tattoos is recruited in the NCS. New tattoos constitute a disciplinary offense, Hamunyala wrote. The names of correctional officers bearing tattoos would subsequently also be taken for record keeping. Remember to engage with these stories on our social media throughout the broadcast. Visual news coming up after the break. Welcome to Active Kids, a daily TV show that sparks creativity, learning, and fun for young minds. With exciting activities and lessons, Active Kids inspires curiosity and a love for learning. New face to the next 15. <laughs> the perfect mix of play and education. Don't miss out on the fun. Tune into Active Kids on NTV every weekday at 10 o'clock and let the adventure begin. Heading into visual news, Chief Economist at Capricorn Asset Management, Floris Burke, speaks on the fundamentals of functions of the economy. He was speaking at the Basic Financial Literacy for Media Practitioners workshop at the Weinberg in Vintuk by Bankers Association of Namibia. Just a sort of overview and basics of the workings of the economy and I tended to divide it into three groupings of areas. The first is the real economy, where you look at GDP and how firms perform, and then also what is the status of the consumer. The second great area is the one where we're looking at the financial side of things. There we look at things like the money supply, credit growth. We look at the balance of payments, the currency regime and then also um, yeah, the, the exchange rate. So that's the financial component. And then lastly, we're looking at the arena of, of policy making, where we distinguish between macroeconomic policy as it is uh, contained in monetary policy and fiscal policy. And then we have what I just call other areas of policy, like for instance, development initiatives, the Arambi plan will fall there, for instance. And then lastly, we look quickly at the asset markets. At the asset markets, I, I basically mean the investments that we have, the savings, the money market, the capital market, the uh, equity market. Equity market is really just shares and the property market. These things play a big role in how people perceive their wealth situation developing. And do not forget that all of us that have, let's say just for instance, a pension fund that we're saving, we are exposed to these asset markets in our personal capacity so that we make provision for future consumption like retirement or whatever the case may be. So. We covered these three areas in an overview type of approach and then we looked at the importance of the overall covering this whole discussion is the importance of the basic philosophy 
of the nation or the society where it is important to just acknowledge what is it that society agrees on. Much of that is actually implicit. So there's no explicit social contract, so to speak, but the belief systems and the philosophy and the schools of thought that is dominant in the society as a whole plays a very big role which is largely unquantifiable but nevertheless very present because you get the trickle down from the overall philosophy into all of these areas that we discussed. The World Fund Administration will allocate 250 million Namibian dollars over a five-year term to the municipality of Wawish Bay for the expansion of the road network leading into the port of Wawish Bay to support the seamless flow of cargo into and out of the port, its CEO Ali Ipinge said. It forms part of an agreement between the RFA and the municipality of Wawish Bay, which was concluded this morning. The RFA re-emphasized the significance role that it plays in the Namibian road network uh, in terms of development and expansion and also that our mandate extends to the provision of financial support to local authorities for the maintenance of their urban uh, roads and also settlement roads in case of uh, village council. The funding that we allocate to local authorities uh, are therefore determined and applied on the basis of uh, economic efficiencies, safety, equity, and transparency within the road user charging instruments. The RFA through this memorandum of agreement uh, is committing an amount of 248 million over the next five-year business plan for the rehabilitation and widening of specifically Wolfish Bay Municipal Roads leading into the port of Wolfish Bay. And these funds are derived from the road user charges and we want to then see that the urban roads within the municipality of Wolfish Bay uh, that specifically link into the port are then rehabilitated um, and widened to ensure that they support the transport corridors ideals. Now Lutombi scoffs at Chinese tender brouhaha. An update on this story follows in the newspaper review segment. Welcome to My Dot NA Cars, your ultimate destination for everything automotive. I am your host, Diana Mosta. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Discover the latest models, innovative technologies, and expert insights from our passionate hosts. Learn essential maintenance tips and get exclusive behind the scenes access to the automotive industry. Don't miss my dot NA cars on NTV every Thursday at 2100 hours. Tune in and ignite your passion for automobiles. Diving into the newspaper review, the Namibian Sun's front page reports that the Roads Authority says it did not receive a significant amount of bids from Namibian companies for the upgrade of the Yusakos Karibib Road, in which seven Chinese construction firms have been shortlisted. Instead, it said it only saw three Namibian companies showing interest in the bidding process, which was being financed by Germany's main development bank, KFW. RACO Conrad Lutombi said since KFW is funding the upgrade of the road, it was the bank that set the requirements for the companies participating in the project. What happened is we ran a pre-qualification tender and it was in terms of KFW's rules. It was open to international companies and not only Namibian companies. In total, 17 companies tendered and out of this there were only three Namibian companies tendered in joint ventures, Lutombi told Namibian Sun. 
On page 3, the death of Johanna Karamin Birkas, reportedly at the hands of her police officer husband, has shed light on a marriage plagued by domestic violence and a trail of police reports. Karamin Birkas was fatally shot in an apparent murder-suicide while she was attending choir practice at the AGS church in Mariento, according to the police. Her husband, Chief Inspector Michael Birkas, killed her in the presence of their two-year-old child last Thursday afternoon before shooting himself in the head in front of his house with a pistol, which was recorded stolen in June last year. Republican informs that the Chinese lithium miner Xin Feng Investments lawyer Nambili Mata has filed an urgent application to the High Court brought by the Minister of Mines and Energy Tom Alwendo to set aside the revocation of the mining license. The parties will, according to the court, make their first appearance on the 23rd of May before Judge Ramon Mastop via an online system. On page 3, Namibians in the south and central parts of the country will experience a cold front that is expected over the weekend. The temperatures are expected to drop to 0 degrees Celsius on Saturday in Karasberg. Richard Nashikaku, chief weather forecaster at the Namibian Weather Office, said Noldorva, was, as well as near Kidman's Whoop, will also be very cold. Farmers, especially in the Karasberg area, have heard their livestock and crops to protect them from the cold as windy weather and possibly rain is expected, he added. Algomana Zeitung is opening with the Namibian Minister of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform, Karl Schlattwein, who has unceremoniously declared meat coal technically insolvent as the slaughter and meat processing plant's obligations exceed its assets. And yet the MAWLR is committed to rehabilitating this public enterprise, causing some jitters among Namibian taxpayers who in Meatcom fear another bottomless pitch similar to the millions of taxpayers' funds squandered on Air Namibia. And on page 3 of the Algomana Zeitung, you can read more about the Hackmere murder case that features prominently in the Namibian High Court once again. A Namibian police officer testifies again about the scene of the murder of Andre Hackmere, and another witness from a freight company told more about a package from Helsinki in Finland, which the accused had supposedly sent to themselves. An MTC employee also testified. We'll be continuing with the newspaper review, starting with the Namibia newspaper after the break. Another exciting episode of Iran World Tour. We will at least be here and tell you what we are first. You are going to stand by. Continuing with the newspaper review, the Namibian newspaper reports that the National Power Utility has announced it would suspend electricity supply to defaulting customers from 5 June unless these customers settle their full outstanding amounts before the date. Namibia Power Corporation Limited spokesperson Tangeni Kabangula yesterday in a statement said this is because the power utility's customers owe it over a billion Namibian dollars. The situation has concerned Nampower for a considerable time and we have had several interventions with various stakeholders in this regard. If this state is left without further action, it will detrimentally affect our duty to supply electricity to the entire country on a sustainable basis, she said. On page 3, fingerprints found on a car in which a young man was shot dead in Vintuk at the start of 2011 did not match the prints of two American men being prosecuted in connection with the killing. A member of the Namibian police's crime scene unit, Warrant Officer Paulus Namindo, testified in the Vintuk High Court this week that he found fingerprints on the driver's side door of the car in which the 25-year-old Andre Heckmeyer was found killed in a dead-end street in Klein Vintuk on 7 January 2011. Namindo said he also found palm prints on the roof of the car above the driver's door. He lifted the fingerprints and palm prints and later received the fingerprints of the two men accused of murdering Heckmeyer, Americans Marcus Thomas and Kevin Townsend. For the comparison with the prints from the vehicle, Namindo told Judge Christy Liebenberg on Monday. The prints found on the car did not match the prints of the two charged men, he said, bottom of form. 
On New Era, the visit of a parliamentary committee to the Daures constituency opened Pandora's box of mining irregularities and deficient regulation in the area. Traditional authorities likewise agreed that they failed their communities by accepting allowances from mining companies. We only see people digging in our area without telling us how they end up there. Instead, they refer us to our government, said the chief of Tubuses, David Goraseb. Now, Goraseb was highlighting the mining state of affairs in the ok Okombahe area and surrounding farms to the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Natural Resources on Monday. On page 3, community members in Ondangwa have damaged the sewage pond embankments located in Extension 9. The pond was designed to hold sewage from nearby households when toilets are flushed. The waste is transported by water using gravity and flows into designated sewage ponds. According to Ondangwa Town Council spokesperson Petrina Shitalangaho Mutikisha, the sewage pond has fish which are not fit for human consumption. We believe the community members or fishermen vandalized the pond to access fish. It is not clear where the fishermen are taking these fish. We therefore plead with the community around Ondangwa to desist from buying such fish as they are contaminated and not fit for consumption. The sewage pond was previously fenced off from the community but has unfortunately become accessible after criminals stole the fence. Market Watch reports that high prices of commodities for which Namibia is a net importer could weigh on the country's economic growth forecast for 2023. The Bank of Namibia identified the high costs of key import items as one of the key risks to its 3% economic growth projection this year. As of 31st March 2023, the stock of international reserves increased to 48.5 billion from 47.4 billion Namibian dollars in February 2023. At this level, the stock of international reserves is estimated to cover 5.5 one month of imports, the central bank said at the last monetary policy announcement. According to the Namibia Statistics Agency, the value of imports increased to 12.4 billion Namibian dollars in March 2023, compared to 8.5 billion and 9.4 billion dollars in February 2023 and March 2022, respectively. Inflation in the first quarter of 2023 averaged 7.1 percent, compared to 4.5 percent during the same period last year. Namibia is welcoming its first digital nomads. More on this story in economic news after the break. Discover the breathtaking beauty of Namibia with Tourismus, a captivating program that uncovers the country's diverse landscapes, wildlife, and cultural experiences. Featuring insightful interviews with tourism experts, each episode takes you on a mesmerizing journey, exploring Namibia's majestic sand dunes, vibrant wildlife, and unique attractions. Watch Tourismus on NTV, Saturdays at 20.30 in German, and Sundays at 6 p.m. in English, for a heartwarming and unforgettable adventure. Looking at economic news, Namibia officially recorded its first digital nomads just five months after the official launch of the country's digital nomad visa on 11 October 2022. The program was launched by the Ministry of Home Affairs, Immigration and Security and the Namibia Investment Promotion and Development Board to enhance economic activity in the country. The first two digital nomad visa applications were approved on the 14th of February this year. The DNV program aims to capitalize on the growing global remote workforce by offering location-independent foreign professionals the chance to live, work and experience Namibia for up to six months. These digital nomads contribute towards the country's economy by injecting foreign currency into the ecosystem, but without usurping jobs meant for Namibians. Early results are encouraging with over 121 inquiries about the program recorded so far. Of this number, a total of 20 applications were received, out of which nine were approved with five rejections. The reasons for rejection include applicants who do not meet the income requirements of 2,000 US dollars per month and are thus unable to prove that they can effectively sustain themselves while in Namibia. Let's head into the economic indicators. The Namibian dollar is up next to the Chinese yuan, but is down next to the British pound, euro and US dollar, trading at 18.73 next to the US dollar. Most commodities managed, sorry, most stocks managed to maintain their value, whilst Capricorn investment made an uptick of 0.1%. Both the local and overall indexes closed 0.1% and 0.57% down. 
Looking at commodities, zinc and Brent crude oil made some downturns, whilst gold and copper both made upticks. Senegal opposition calls for protests over alleged threat to bar Sonko from vote. Stay with NMH at 1 for an update. Welcome to What's Cooking, where culinary passion meets expert insights. Somebody must really want to cook and want to cook good food. Immerse yourself in the bustling world of professional kitchens as top chefs create mouthwatering dishes. Join us for in-depth interviews as our host explores the experiences and expertise of our guest chefs. Don't miss out. Tune in to What's Cooking on NTV every Friday at 2100 hours and let the culinary adventure begin. Senegal's opposition coalition said it would stage rallies over a threat to bar one of its leaders, Osmane Sonko, from presidential elections after he was convicted in a defamation case. Sonko was on Monday handed a six-month suspended term that could jeopardize his bid for the 2024 elections. His possible elimination would significantly alter the contest and could also lead to violence from his supporters. Sonko claims the judiciary is being used to sideline him from the vote. The people have to mobilize to support Osmane Sonko in this fight. Khalifa Sao, one of the coalition chiefs, taught a press conference on Tuesday. He joined other heads of the Yewi Askanwi Alliance in urging followers to turn out in force for an already scheduled rally due this Friday and for another protest a week later on May the 19th. Senegal is traditionally a beacon of stability in troubled West Africa, but in recent years has been buffeted by turbulence that has at times turned deadly. Sonko 48 came third in the 2019 election against incumbent Macky Sall and intends to stand again next year. But his candidacy has been clouded by Monday's conviction, which saw an appeal court increase the sentence of two months suspended handed down in March for defaming tourism minister Mamem Baye Niangotum. The court also ordered Sonko to pay around $330,000 in damages to Niang. The opposition figure has not issued any public statement since Monday. Sonko is also facing trial later this month for alleged rape and death threats over a complaint filed by an employee at a beauty salon where he went for a massage. He says he is the victim of a government plot to scupper his candidacy. The government has denied the accusation. In 2021, the rape charge against him helped trigger riots that left at least 12 people dead. The presidential party accuses Sonko of seeking to paralyze the country and of drumming up anger on the streets in a bid to escape justice. We'll be heading into international news. Welcome to Active Kids, a daily TV show that sparks creativity, learning, and fun for young minds. With exciting activities and lessons, Active Kids inspires curiosity and a love for learning. New face to the <laughs> <laughs> The perfect mix of play and education. Don't miss out on the fun. Tune in to Active Kids on NTV every weekday at 10 o'clock and let the adventure begin. Heading into international news, countries should agree to phase out fuel emissions, not the production of oil, gas and coal at the UN climate talks this year, the United Arab Emirates says. The UAE Minister of Climate Change and Environment, Maryam al Meheri, said phasing out fossil fuels would hurt countries that either depend on them for revenue or cannot easily replace hydrocarbons with renewable energy sources. She favors phasing out fossil fuel emissions using capture and storage technology while ramping up renewable energy. Energy, saying this strategy allows countries to fight global warming while continuing to produce oil, gas and coal. Now the renewable space is advancing and accelerating extremely fast, but we are nowhere near to being able to say what we can switch off fuel fossil fuels and solely depend on clean and renewable energy. Now, our Mary said on the sidelines of a climate conference in Washington, D.C., we are now in a transition, and this transition needs to be just and pragmatic because not all countries have the resources, she said. The comments reflect deep divisions among nations over how to combat the growing danger from climate change ahead of U.N. negotiations known as COP28 to be held in Dubai from November 30 to December 12. Some wealthy Western governments and climate-afflicted island nations have been pushing for a phase-out of fossil fuels, while 
more resource-rich countries have campaigned to keep drilling. Stay with us as we get into the news of Black Africa being relegated in our local sports. Welcome to My Dot NA Cars, your ultimate destination for everything automotive. I am your host, Diana Mostat. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Discover the latest models, innovative technologies, and expert insights from our passionate hosts. Learn essential maintenance tips and get exclusive behind the scenes access to the automotive industry. Don't miss my dot NA cars on NTV every Thursday at 2100 hours. Tune in and ignite your passion for automobiles. Heading into local sport, for the first time in domestic football, one of the biggest clubs and most successful clubs, Black Africa, has been relegated. This has irked some long-serving fans, understandably so, as they have really been dominating Namibian football for a very long time. Head coach of Navy Netball Club, Oahena Kasume, is eager to maintain the club's impressive run in the MTC Netball Premier League when it returns this weekend at the Patrick Iyambo College in Vintok. And Michael Hamokwaya, the Secretary General of the Namibia Paralympic Committee, is hoping that para-athletes will be given more opportunities to compete in main events of future FNB Botswana Grand Prix events. We'll be talking about Manchester City and Real Madrid's clash last night as we head into international sport. Another exciting episode of the Rongo Top. We will be able to see the first time for the Lavari first. The other month will come back. Manchester City will be unstoppable at home when they host Real Madrid in the second leg of their Champions League semi-final. Now, this was according to winger Jack Grealish after last night's 1-1 draw at the Bilbao Vini, making sure that he scored and, of course, De Bruyne keeping Man City well in the game. South Africa has sealed the final automatic qualification spot for the World Cup after Ireland's hopes of piping them were dashed on Tuesday when their first one-day international against Bangladesh was washed out. The importance of Sia Kolisi to South Africa's Rugby World Cup defence has been underlined by his inclusion on Tuesday in a preliminary Springbok training camp despite undergoing knee ligament surgery. Stay with us as we head into the highlights from this afternoon's broadcast. Discover the breathtaking beauty of Namibia with Tourismus, a captivating program that uncovers the country's diverse landscapes, wildlife, and cultural experiences. Featuring insightful interviews with tourism experts, each episode takes you on a mesmerizing journey, exploring Namibia's majestic sand dunes, vibrant wildlife, and unique attractions. Watch Tourismus on NTV, Saturdays at 20.30 in German, and Sundays at 6 p.m. in English, for a heartwarming and unforgettable adventure. Let's get into the highlights from this afternoon's broadcast. Senegal's opposition coalition said on Tuesday it would stage rallies over a threat to bar one of its leaders, Osmane Sonko, from presidential elections after he was convicted in a defamation case. Countries should agree to phase out fuel emissions, not the production of oil, gas and coal at the UN climate talks this year, the United Arab Emirates says. And Michael Hamukwaya, the Secretary General of the Namibia Paralympic Committee, is hoping that para athletes will be given more opportunities to compete in main events of future FNB Botswana Grand Prix events. Those have been your highlights. Remember to tune in every weekday at 1 p.m. to spend your lunch hour with NMH at 1, catching up on the latest news in Namibia, Africa, and the world, ranging from current affairs to economic news, sports, and international headlines. It's goodbye from us in studio.